Paul says he wants the churches joined together in love so that they will have understanding, which leads to them knowing fully God's secret, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And I want to just talk about this for a minute because there's so many things just packed into that, that little section. First of all, when Paul says the hope of glory, he is saying this is, this is why we have hope that one day we will have glory. He doesn't say our hope for glory is that Jesus died on the cross. No, he says our hope for glory is that Christ is in us. That Christ is living in us. He's breathing in us. He's, he is in us. He says, it's no longer I who live, it's Christ who lives in me. That is the hope of glory. We have hope to have, we can hope for glory one day because Christ is living in us. That is where our salvation comes from. It's not just Jesus died on the cross because the gospel is not just about being forgiven. It's not just about being forgiven so we can go to heaven someday. No, we have hope of going to heaven someday because it's no longer us living, it's Christ living in us. We have hope of going to heaven someday because we are made righteous in this life through the Holy Spirit living in us. Through Christ living in us, so it's no longer us who live, it's Christ who lives in us. That's our hope for glory. But there's another part of this, what, what Paul said there. <clears throat> he said that he wants them, the churches he was writing to, to be joined together in love so that they will have understanding, so that they will know God's secret, Christ in you. Love is what leads to it all. Being joined together in love is what leads to it all. This is something he says in Philemon as well. In Philemon, which was written at the same time as Colossians, it's something, these letters were probably sent together. And we can tell because Philemon is talking about a guy named Onesimus. I'm probably saying that wrong. <clears throat> and how he's sending Onesimus back to Philemon. And in Colossians, he also mentions Onesimus and how he is sending Onesimus back to the Colossians. So Philemon is probably a guy who lived in Col Col Colossae. I don't even know how to say any of these words. Philemon was probably a Colossian and he was sending Onesimus back to Philemon among the Colossians. So these letters were probably written at the same time and sent with the same guy to the same people and Philemon was just one of the Colossians. Anyway, in Philemon, he says that he wants him to be empowered through the fellowship of faith, empowered to understand God's secrets or God's mystery, I think might be what he says. What he's saying is he wants Philemon to be empowered through the fellowship of faith and fellowship means it's that word, again, that's used all throughout the Bible, and it doesn't mean having conversation. It means sharing everything, in co sharing everything in common. The sharing of everything in common through faith is what will empower Philemon to know God's secret or whatever it says. <clears throat> the point being, love. Love, living in true biblical love is what empowers a believer to know God's secret. He says it in Colossians 2, he says it in Philemon. And this is no surprise because Jesus said, those who love me will obey my commands. He says this three times in the same chapter. And one of those times he says, the ones who obey my commands are the ones who love me and my father will love them and we will come and make our home with them. Jesus' commands were to love others as he loved us. And he's saying, if you do this, then we will come make our home with you. Him coming and making his home in us is what Paul is talking about when he says, Christ in you. We have life by the Spirit living in us. But we only have the Spirit living in us if we are obeying Christ's commands. And we come to understand God's secret 
the fullness of his secret, the fullness of his wisdom, we gain understanding through living in love, biblical love, sharing everything, looking out for others' interests instead of our own. This is what Paul's getting at. He's saying this, if you obey Jesus' command to love others as he loved us, then if, you, if you're living that life, <clears throat> then Christ is going to come and live in you and you're going to begin to understand his secret, his secret being Christ in you and that this is the hope for glory. And there is so much more there about the fact that Christ is in you. I mean, it's not just, okay, now you've got the Holy Spirit in you. No, it's so much bigger than that because Jesus was praying that we would be one with him in the same way that he's one with the Father. Paul's basically saying the same thing Jesus said and what that is, is if you really want to understand the secret of God, if you wanna understand what it means that Christ is in you, if you wanna live in the reality that the apostles were living in and see the things that you see in the book of Acts, it all starts with obeying Jesus' commands. Those who obey his commands are the ones who love him and he will make his home with them. And that's the same thing Paul's saying. Love empowers you to know God's secret. Love empowers you to know and understand the fullness of God's secret and his secret is Christ in you. This is the hope of glory. The hope of glory is not Jesus died for your sins so now you're forgiven. The hope of glory is Christ in you. If you are not a changed person, if Christ is not the one living in you, breathing in you, acting in you, then you don't have the hope of glory. But if you choose to follow Jesus' commands and live in the radical love the Bible talks about, then you will begin to fully understand God's secret, his mystery, that Christ is in you. All of the fullness of God lives in Christ and he lives in you. And there's so much more to that that we need to begin to understand in the church today. All begins with living in the kind of love that the Bible talks about, the kind of love we've been talking about on this channel. It all starts there. If we just start living the way Jesus wants us to live, then we will begin to understand the fullness of the gospel, the fullness of what it means to have Christ in us. That's where it all begins. If you want that, start with love. That's where it all starts. And it's not just love because the Bible says to love. Live in love because you believe in Jesus, because you have faith in his promises and one of his promises is that he will come and live in you if you obey his commands and his command is to love so live in love because of that <clears throat> live in love because of his promises live in radical love because you know that this this is what jesus wants you to do and this is when jesus is going to reveal himself to you if you live in love